is it comes down to a couple of smiles yeah. and like a partial dance. But <gasps> LeFou has a crush on Gaston. Josh Gad's character has this sort of like well, veiled that, affection for yeah, Gaston. I, mean, I think that's what's so fantastic about um, Josh's performance mm -hmm. is that it's so subtle. It's always like, does he idolize Gaston? Is he in love with Gaston? Like what is kind of what's the relationship mm -hmm. there and i think it's it's incredibly subtle to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest i don't want people going into this movie thinking that there's like a huge uh sort of narrative there mm -hmm. there really isn't it's incredibly subtle and it's kind of a play on on having the audience go is it is it is it not mm -hmm. um and i think it's fun i mean i think that it's sort of i love the ambiguity of mm -hmm. that it's really it's it's interesting. The, the whole movie, though, I think, takes um, an effort to expand its horizons a little bit. Is it's not it's it's set in the south of France, but it's not like the village is full of of white characters. Yes, you have yes. a, a sort of multicultural population. And when I talked to the director Bill Condon about this, he said, "Well, you know, um, it could be that they came from Morocco. Like, there's the he said there's some yeah. logic to it, but also." It's a movie about a girl who falls in love with a man who's magically been transformed into a beast and has yeah. candle friends. Like maybe we could suspend this belief a little bit more to just yeah. say all sorts of people can live think, in this village. You know, ultimately, these parts and these roles, fairy tales in general, are full of are full of archetypes mm -hmm. and universal themes. And each time of each time a new generation tells these stories they they use these fairy tales as a as a mirror for their own society and their own culture mm -hmm. and we live in a diverse culture and society we live in a global world and i think bill felt that it was very important that the film represent that diverse mm -hmm. society represent the the more the more global world that we live in and and um yeah and that's that's why our, our movie does that so it, Wednesday was International Women's Day, and you're yes. active with the United Nations He for She program. Yes. I mean, this is what we've already discussed. is mm. very important to you. How did you spend the day? So I spend the day book ninjuring, <laughs> which is my, which is which is the way that I describe it. Actually, um, there's a there's an organization that I work with called they call themselves book fairies. Mm -hmm. um, but I did five different book drops around um, iconic sort of feminist locations in New York. So I went and I left books next to the Gertrude Stein statue, the Eleanor Roosevelt, the Joan of Arc, um, and the Blue Stockings Library, um, sorry, books, Blue Stockings um, Radical Bookstore. And there was one more which I'm missing off. Was it Gloria Steinem's house? Right? Oh, I did that in the <laughs> evening. Um, but yeah, so I was, I was busy. I was running mm -hmm. around all over town. Um, yeah, it's, it's really fun. Um, anyway. It's really fun. Go ahead. And, and I loved, uh, because it's kind of become a thing now, a few people who saw me were like, you're doing the thing, you're leaving the book. So I was like, <laughs> yes, yeah, I am. Um, so it's nice because, you know, I think sometimes people see the books and they're like, I, they must be for someone else or whatever else. But people or now, someone forgot it. Yeah, yeah. or someone left it or whatever. Um, so people are picking them up now and they're more curious and, and, and whatever else. So it's nice. I saw a headline that said, Emma. Watson is uh, leaving books all over the world, and I thought, when did she get Santa Claus powers? Like, I know, <laughs> so fun. So you had helpers all around the world yeah, doing so after book I did, fairies. After I did the first book drop, um, I started getting letters from mm -hmm. all over the world, being like, "Come and do it in, you know, Dubai. Come mm -hmm. and do it in Japan or or wherever." And so um, Cordelia and I, who who helps me, who helps me do it, um, we sort of coordinated this international um, book drop where we had volunteers from every country uh, and we sent them books and and they went and mm -hmm. left them around it was it was remarkable we actually managed to do 26 different countries wow. around the world so um, really fun watch really, out Easter Bunny really Tooth fun Fairy, I know Watson. I'm coming for you <laughs> I'm after your job <laughs> What were the books that you, uh, are they the same? Is there a, a, a no, limited so number of books or a whole No, so this was the other cool variety? thing was that previously we, I would leave books for that specific month of my book club, whatever our book club choice was. Mm -hmm. We actually left books from, from you know, the last oh, six or seven months. We, we left six or seven different feminist titles. Mm -hmm. So we had Gloria Steinem's new book, My Life on the Road. We had Caitlin Moran's How to Be a Woman. Mm -hmm. uh, we had The Color Purple by Alice Walker, Persepolis. Um, 
So yeah, we, we, we left a range of, of different of different ones. It's pretty cool. Do you foresee yourself continuing this in the future? Or it seems like you enjoy it a lot. I do. It's really fun. It's sort of um, civil disobedience is fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I shouldn't be I shouldn't be advertising that, but um, yeah, it was uh, no as long as. Mm -hmm. As long as people keep asking and, and volunteering, I'm super down to keep doing it. What are you reading at the moment? I know you have Our Shared Shelf as your book yeah. club. Yeah, you know, my friend gave me for Christmas, um, she, uh, she's a psychiatrist, and she gave me Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, which is a pretty amazing book. Mm -hmm. It's got some pretty heavy subject matter, but it's actually surprisingly sort of readable, and it's, it's actually... It's actually very short, but um, yeah, I loved it. Mm -hmm. Really loved it. Some really good, really good words of wisdom in there. Mm -hmm. He's a very, uh, very clever man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, when we spoke last time, it was a few days before the Women's March, mm -hmm. and I know you participated in it. I, I saw some photos of you out. Were you with your mother? I was with my mom. Yeah. Where did you Where did you uh, march? Where Which city were you in? Wash we flew to Washington D.C., oh. which was actually amazing because it was it was her who messaged me saying. No, when are we booking flights to DC? <laughs> I was like, wow, okay. Radical mom. Yeah, radical mom, <laughs> love it. Yeah, she was, uh, it's her first ever protest. Mm -hmm. It was my first ever protest. Um, and I think we loved that it just felt so, there was something that actually in the energy that felt very celebratory. Mm -hmm. It felt very celebratory of the work that we've done, that we continue to do. Um, it, it felt really joyful and i love the i love the age ranges as well mm -hmm. like lots of very young kids there mm -hmm. all the way through to you know grandmas marching for their granddaughters mm -hmm. like it was very cross-generational and very peaceful and um yeah very very joyful mm -hmm. in its own way you know like serious but you know i think um it also had a great sense of humor mm -hmm. which is key it's absolutely key. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Why is that so important? I um, think you're right, but I'd love yeah, to hear what you think. Yeah, I think true. as long as no one is, there's something about humor to me which speaks to humility, which which speaks to yeah, to being humble, to being human, to it's such a way to connect people, and I think as long as you're not taking yourself too seriously. Mm -hmm. Nothing can go too badly wrong. Mm -hmm. um, it, yeah. It, it, when, when also, if there's, like a, if there's a case of fear, you don't laugh when you're afraid. I think it's a, sh a sign of strength if yeah. you can laugh at something. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And um, yeah, it's uh, if you if you can find the funny side of things, and if you can laugh together in in very difficult moments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as you say, I don't think there's a lot that can that can totally stop you or, or tear you down. It's, it's, a, it's a sign of resilience. Yeah, and yeah. Uni unity too. Unity right? and Anybody resilience. who's seen a comedy in a movie theater knows yeah. it's m more fun to laugh in a whole room full of people than, than it is alone. to laugh alone, uh, for sure. Exactly. For sure. So um, we're talking with Emma Watson here on Sirius XM Entertainment Weekly Radio about her new film, Beauty and the Beast. And uh, yes. But also you've got a lot on the horizon yes. in your future. Uh, uh, one of the films coming up in uh, just over a month is The Circle. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes out on April 28th. This is uh, based on a book by Dave Eggers. I believe you wrote the screenplay too, didn't he you? He did, yeah. Yeah, yeah and yeah. it's directed by James Ponsolt, yep. co-stars Tom Hanks. Uh, you play a young woman who's part of a new tech company, mm -hmm. a pioneering organization. Let's, can you tell us about the story of The Circle? Yeah, so the story's kind of about what I love about the film is that it, it could kind of be now. It's it's not set as a kind of like future dystopian mm -hmm. world. It's sort of like, okay, we're in 2000, let's say we're in 2017. And I'm going to imagine that all of these big tech companies became one kind of huge con conglomerate. Mm -hmm. and, and what would happen if they had the monopoly on our personal information? Mm -hmm. So, um, really, not very si science fiction y. It's, it's actually basically. not that yeah. science fiction y <laughs> at all. It, and what that would mean for democracy, what mm -hmm. that would mean for civil rights, what that would mean for, you know, it's, um, what that would mean is kind of like. It's for kind relationships, of, too. For relationships. Right? It's kind of George Orwell's 1984, mm -hmm. but written for now mm -hmm. what would happen if this started to happen tomorrow and it's really interesting because it kind of it juggles what's private what's not mm -hmm. um what's personal information what should people be able to access not access 
Um, and it's, yeah, it, it deals with all of that. Um, it's interesting because we made the movie before the election. Mm -hmm. But actually, I think now that the election has happened, I think the film really... I'll be interested to see what people think of it because I think it, it kind of... Um, it speaks so much to what is going on sort of right now. Um, it's also about self-surveillance, isn't it? It's about it is, how yeah. you behave when you're being watched. Uh -huh. and, and in a way, we already do that. We tweet yes. about where we are. Yes. We Instagram about where we are. Yeah. Facebook updates. It's, yeah. it's, it reminds me of like uh, years ago, our you know, nieces would have to text their mom and dad to say whether they were at the football game or where yeah. they were. And, uh, and, and now it's like, yeah, now yeah. we do that sort of, you don't even have to be asked. You voluntarily give out your coordinates yeah. every few minutes. <laughs> I think also it looks at the effects of, of constantly being so self-aware mm -hmm. and always being ready to smile for a picture, always ready to be on camera, always ready to share a detail of your life and to be constantly kind of like curating your life. Mm -hmm whether it be like what you're eating for breakfast through to what you're saying to a friend mm -hmm. and the kind of like paranoia and that that kind of gives birth to and how just like exhausting it is for human beings to constantly feel like they need to be on mm -hmm. um, and the kind of toll that, that, that that's taking I think is really interesting. I think for me just recently I have had to put some boundaries on because you can access everything instantly from your phone, mm -hmm. it's so much more difficult now, I feel like, to get any kind of reprieve from it all. It's mm -hmm. a constant inundation of emails, social media alerts, news alerts, media alerts, whatever else. And you, you know, sometimes it kind of feels like, whoa, this is, this is a lot to manage constantly. Overload. It's overload. Mm -hmm. I actually recently deleted my mail off app off my phone so to make me go and you know sit down on the computer and actually be like okay now I'm going to do this one thing at a time or now I'm going to check the news one thing at a time mm -hmm. because I found that I would be constantly doing like six things at once or reading six different articles. I would be on Twitter and messaging someone and looking at Instagram and reading the news and an email and like I was like, oh my Hard God. Hard to live in the moment. Yeah, it's very difficult that, right? to be present. And very difficult to be present and very difficult to kind of, you lose your focus. And really as human beings, like I feel like the most valuable thing that we have is our time and our attention. Mm -hmm. And if our, our attention and our time is constantly being eaten by those things, you know, we, we're letting these things eat our most valuable commodity. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I've had to put some boundaries in place, I think. And I think being part of the film really made me think about these things a lot more than I was maybe thinking about them before. And I wondered how much of it was your feeling about it before you came in and how much did the film change your perspective on? Yeah, I think for sure, I, I know it did. Mm -hmm. And I, it's one of the reasons I wanted to do the movie because I was like, you know, it was something that I read mm -hmm. and I couldn't really stop thinking about. And I always know that's, some, that's the kind of movie that I mm -hmm. want to be in if days or weeks later I'm like, oh, you know, I'm still pondering an aspect <laughs> of it or I want to talk about it, you know. And I would still, I mean, I constantly, I still call Dave and I go, what do you think about this? Is there mm -hmm. an answer to this? Is there a solution to this? Is there a whatever? I mean, the, the film, like a lot of great films do, I think, like throws up a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. I think audience members will come out and want to go for a beer so that they can <laughs> really kind of like hash it out. That's a good movie, one that you can have a conversation about yeah, after, the, yeah, after the fact. I think so. so Tom Hanks plays a kind of, I think on the surface you'd say he's sort of a Steve Jobs type. He's the head of this company, mm -hmm. but he's also very charismatic. Yes. Um, uh, w are there any other like real life figures that factor into the type of person he plays. Oh. He's not playing anybody from real life, but interesting. is there a Bill Gates element? Is there? I think what's so terrifying about mm -hmm. Bailey, as you say, is that he's incredibly powerful, mm -hmm. but and smart, but he also has this kind of 